Knowledge and ignorance. How we structure our ignorance, things we don't know. How we structure our knowledge, things we know. Well, in the branch of a very delicate issues such as metaphysics, reasoned theology and magic, we are moving almost in the blind unless we are highly experienced. Here I would like to present some tools that will enable you on the path if you wish to pursue the path of the last magicians of rational thought. Not ignorance, but ignorance of ignorance is the death of knowledge. Have you ever heard about astrologers having absolutely no idea about physical astronomy? Well, my advice is to study the physical sciences in order to have a solid foundational grounding before you begin dabbing in magic. Science comes first, magic comes second. Broad education comes first, magic comes second. It works better that way. You won't get misled on the way. You won't be deceived by a bunch of illusionists. And so on, so on. You won't fall into your delusions and ignorance. Learned ignorance. The apophatic tradition of cultivating the virtue of unknowing. We know only this much about the world. Some of us know more about the world. However, it is intellectually humble to assume that we know little. We know that we know very little about the world. Even if we read volumes, we still know very little about the world. From this intellectual humble stance, we may derive the things we don't know. So we know we do not know things. And therefore, we need certainties. Certainties we find by building on the things we know we don't know. So, from this standpoint on, it is very honest to begin the path. And even the most experienced cognoscendi and knower doesn't know shit. Until he's dead. Even the greatest expert doesn't know everything and he possibly won't, although we trust their authority because they are specialists and experts in their own fields. So, the beautiful tradition started by Nicholas of Cusa in the De Docta Ignorantia, he lived 1401-1464. Uh, he built on certain key insights of Meister Eckhart and carrying forward the most paradoxical and penetrating teachings of Neoplatonism, called from assiduous frequentation, especially of Proclus and Pseudo Dionysus the Aeropagite. Cusanus consistently leads all knowledge back to its inescapable origins in unknowing. All genuine knowledge can be only, according to him, from God, who is infinite and therefore unknowable. How can we know the unknowable? Hmm, we cannot. Therefore, if the universe is indivisible and we create more categories, we only have the categories that are necessary to be known in order to pursue certain foundational work, both in magic, reasoned theology, reasoned metaphysics, reasoned thaumaturgy, necromancy, negromancy, whatsoever. And all these building blocks of unknowing, we actually attain knowledge. From the ignorance we pursue, we attain knowledge. We delineate hermetically, hermeneutically, the heuristics the workings of it all. This is the part of the game. So, we move on to Karl Popper, the logic of scientific discovery. Can we apply this to magic, reason theology, metaphysics? Of course. So, what do we have here? There is something called the axiomatized system the form which Hilbert, for example, was able to give to certain branches of theoretical physics. And magic, although not strict, not scientific, is using the same ways of thinking as in theoretical physics and abstract maths. The attempt is made to collect all the assumptions which are needed, but no more, to form the apex of some system. They are usually called the axioms or postulates or primitive propositions and there is no claim to truth. 
the term axiom is used without implying the term truth. The axioms are chosen in such a way that all the other statements belonging to the theoretical systems can be derived from the axioms by purely logical or mathematical transformation. In logic and reason theology, experience kicks in. You experiment in the same manner. So, you discover the laws, you discover the dynamics of it all, you discover how to move around. There are certain laws that govern the invisible worlds, visible to some, and the metaphysical systems, and so on, so on. It doesn't mean that it is a perfect, harmonious order. It means that there are various topological spaces of entropies, and there are laws more harmonious or disharmonious, more creative or destructive within the system. You might say that the laws are very dynamic, but they are not ultra-relative. That means you cannot flatten them down to nonsense and reduce magic to bullshit. It means that you cannot also objectify them completely, like in physical sciences, because we do not have all the information and data about the variables in the magical systems. But once you pin down your magical expert eyes, you develop some magical tools to communicate with the dead, with the spirits, with the marvelous worlds, with the gods, call them as you please. Then it starts to work. Does it work always? This is the catch. The dynamic system refuses to obey experimental scientific methodology. Therefore, we are working with what we may. What works, works. If it works sometimes and not all the times, it means that we capture it alone, once. If it doesn't work all the time, it means that there is no law that obeys such experiences and that we're lost, or that we didn't capture enough variables and enough conditions to meet this law to happen. If it happens all the time, like in physical scientists sometimes, we may assume that we found a law that is permanent. So, we derive by induction first from several experiences a certain general law. It may work at all times, at some times, or in this case it works. But this is just induction, and induction has just a little bit of information. Do we inflate it into the general picture? No. There comes the general picture, our solid foundation in science and experience and knowledge. For example, if we are experienced magicians, we have a robust general theory, an array of magical tools, metaphysical methods, and then we tend to deduce from our knowledge and our experience particulars. And almost always they are correct, almost not at all times. So, gathering experience that is exponential usually and describing it with knowledge, delimiting it, we are creating a feedback loop. And this feedback loop is informing our decisions. So, the more things we perceive and understand, the greater our knowledge and experience and the more things work in the magical business, in the magical tools. We have a whole array of tools, methods. So, strictly speaking, that is, I believe, the best method. You stage a hypothesis, you experiment, induce, deduce, gather knowledge, gather experience, feedback loop, repeat, so on, so on. Modify the system. Something doesn't work. Doesn't mean it works always. Sometimes, never. Modify the system, readapt, experiment, create a ordo up cow, a hermetic out of it. But it needs to have foundations. Therefore, we are the last magicians of rational thought. Of course, a random new age girl, a witch, may say she cast a charm and something happened. There is a synchronicity, association, but it might be her delusion. It might not, it might work, but then she believes that everything she does works, and it doesn't. Why? And then she gets sad and all that, because she lacked the 
discipline training in order to sieve through very difficult chaotic systems of data to see the patterns to order them in a reasonable manner that's why education is important so for you aspiring magicians be general scientists be critical thinkers and be bullshit proof thank you